Hi, I'm Jean. And I'm Sarah. I'm Goodman, she's Strobel, and together we, we create. create. We're here to spread a little cup of kindness your way. We're so glad you're joining us and hoping everyone's having a fabulous day. We had just a marvelous week. It's been a fun week of stitching, stitching, and more stitching, and then a little grumbling here and there when I tried to sew. <laughs> oh, that, that was a catastrophe. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my sewing machine. You know, it's it's a new sewing machine, but it's not an expensive sewing machine. So I mean, it, it sews wonderfully. However, when I tried to put the binding on my quilt, I got the I got the um, the first layer of binding sewed on to the top. But then when you wrap it around, normally I hand sew my binding on the final side. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'll just take the fast route. And I've seen them do it on Fat Quarter Shop. I've seen that YouTube where she clips her little. And it's called <laughs> Stitch in a Ditch, right? Yeah, it was, okay. No. <laughs> you know, you're good. <laughs> and, and I thought, I can do this. I'll well, she was in the ditch an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll get this done so fast. Well, honest to goodness. When my sewing machine tried to go through all these layers, it just uh, got cranky on me and it just didn't work right. So finally, I just took out the stitches and I did it by hand. Let um, me tell you, finally was after the sixth try. Oh, at and least. And when she might At least. This is supposed to be faster and it's taking me two hours longer. I could have had this stitch. I could have had a hand stitch. Okay, take a deep breath and start oh. stitching. <laughs> yes, yes. So what I did is I just put everything away and I let it be. And I woke up in the morning. It, it was be. all good. Life was good. So this morning, which I don't even know why I tried to use the sewing machine because it's something new. I love hand stitching and it's just so... It's just so rewarding to see it come together, like, seamlessly. But anyway, I haven't finished. But um, I went ahead, and so I used the sewing machine to sew the, the first part on. And then here, when you wrap it over, that's where I tried the sewing machine to do that second, but that, that didn't work. So I'm, I'm getting the hand stitching down, and it's just so awesome. I love it. I just love it. So, and you know, we found that backing at Joann's, it was, it's wrinkly right now, but you know, it was real similar that the scrolls kind of resembled Valentine hearts. I thought that's going to be perfect. So this is going to be just a sweet little quilt. And when this it's was, all done. This was from the. This was from the Fat Quarter Shop Cupid Box. Cupid Box. And they had an actual like real quilt. They had you cutting all of these pieces into like little tiny pieces to create hearts and bows. But I decided I wanted to just take these pieces that weren't being used and create my own quilt. So I made a pattern and pieced it all together using the fabric that was brought. I was short a little bit, so I went in my stash and I found this fabric from Poppy Cotton um, and pieced it all together. So there it is. And we do not claim to be mathematical geniuses. No. But we might be. Because we had that put 16th, 18th, half inch. It was a miracle. <laughs> but it worked. And it all worked out really, really and well. Sarah did such a gosh darn nice job of. Oh, for quilting. Because, like quilting. I say, I've got this sewing machine that's not made for quilting. But all I did is I just took the red thread on top and I had the white thread in my bobbin. And um, I went around the big square in the middle, and then I went around each of these little squares in the corner. One, two, and then the two on the bottom with the telephone and the love letter. So it's got five squares quilted around. Well, and, and I was telling Sarah, my theory is she's going through two, two layers of fabric, of matting, batting, excuse me, and then Another so layer one, with two, the trim. Three, four, and then you bring five, this of six, six layers. layers. So there's actually six layers and, of fabric plus batting. And I think it could sew through the six layers. But what happens is you're sewing right on that last seam that you sewed. So therefore, it's I think it's just it's like the little sewing machine that could, but today it couldn't. <laughs> but yes, we're gonna see. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The little sewing machine that could. Yeah, and then I use it. Else, um, other times, 
and it runs beautifully. Yeah. It's just when I try to do this thick stuff that it's like, why did I even try? I think someone is telling you you do a beautiful job of hand stitching. Don't oh, give it up. Oh, thank you. I do you really do like the hand stitching. Really I think well. that's why I just love cross stitching so much. It's just that hand work and you feel like you're in control of every single stitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look what you've got here. We well busy busy. This week. Let me get that. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. this week we're kind of like Marie Kondo. If oh. it wasn't sparking us joy, it was going out. So we were reinventing things. So uh, this is now the centerpiece on Sarah's table, and it's just an old candy jar we kept because we liked the size of it. Yeah, and it's Inside the jar is just things from nature outside from Florida here, little pine cones. Florida, Minnesota, yeah. all over. I just find little nature things, I collect them, and they all have a story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I threw a couple rocks in the bottom just to weight it down. Um, and then these are a wooden flower. We actually, have. these are not, these are oh, really they're heavy. They almost feel clay-like. Right. Clay I've had these for, oh, for over years. 20 years yeah. and they're in like multiple sizes. I've got them all throughout the house and different things. Mm -hmm. um, and so everything just kind of ties together around the house, which I love. But this is, can you show the, the oh, yeah. little place, the table runner it's sitting on? There we go. Yeah, that little mat. Yeah. That is a mat that I picked up years ago at Piper Classics. I think that it's a park design. Is that park it design? It is park design. Yeah. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. show them the back. Oh, uh, there, there it is. is. That <laughs> Do you recognize <laughs> yes. that? It's on. It's the same pattern that's on that quilt that is so old that from Park Design. And it's um, on Sarah's signature matting. Front, no, front oh, the front. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we just kind of made a new centerpiece and absolutely loved it. And I'm not it. sure if the picks came from Park or Park they, Design or uh, they Park Design. I think this Park Design also. Yeah. There was a point when I just everything I was getting was from Park Design. I oh. just love it. And we had a store near us in Minnesota that was selling a lot of Park Design things, and that's how can, I got introduced. Can to. you raise the camera to show what you did to the beautiful light, or is that uh, hard to do? Not easy to do. No, okay. I took. Um, we've got a black chandelier, and it's kind of viney looking. And so I took one of these. I have a big, um, like a four foot garland that matches these sprigs. And so I took that garland and I wrapped it around the base of the chandelier. It's kind of tucked and it looks so cool. And it's got these rustic stars hanging down and yeah. it just really filled it in. And then there's, what do you call these things? Um, it, it has little candelabras with individual light bulbs kind of standing up. Yeah, this so I ordered from a shop on Etsy, I found some candle rings, or they, they actually call them napkin rings, and they're two inches. And these napkin rings match our garland and those sprigs that are in the table centerpiece that I just showed. And so I'm gonna place those over the light bulb so it yep. rests on the tray, the little taper tray there. Mm -hmm. So there's nine of those on the chandelier. So I've got nine of these little napkin candle rings coming. They're gonna be placed on top. I think that's going to blend in so cute. Maybe when it's all done, I'll get a picture and we can insert yeah, the picture in that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. One other thing we wanted to spruce up is I wanted, um, I originally wanted fresh flowers. I and mean, let's start putting some fresh flowers on the table every week. Mm -hmm. You know, they're inexpensive. You can yeah. get some really nice cut fresh frost fresh flowers at the grocery store for yeah. a little of nothing. Yeah. And we're like, let's do that. Well, when I came home, we, I don't know, somehow this jar got created mm -hmm. unexpectedly. Yeah. And we're like, well, what can we do with these fresh cut flowers? Uh -huh. Let me show you what we did with these fresh cut flowers. At the same place I would buy all this park design um, home decor. Uh, Lightning, no, no, hon. I think she's chewing our cord. Yeah. Oh, there, she's good. Okay. She stopped. <laughs> our dog loves cords. <laughs> she's looking at us now like, <laughs> yes, do I get a treat? <laughs> but um, at the same shop, Years ago, I bought another centerpiece, and you're supposed to put candles in the glass votives. And I've had candles in there all the time. And at Christmas time, I take the candles out and I put in the ones that are electric and they light up. So it, it's really nice because we don't light candles in the house anymore. Yeah. But 
I was ready for something different. I was just getting tired of that look and we needed something We're kind of new trying to spruce it up, make it look a little more modernized. Yes, and, but more, yet we'd love the... Keep it primitive, but yet a little bit of fresh contemporary. Oh. And let me show you what we did. Um, let me grab it here very carefully and not yeah. jump over it, Devon. <laughs> Okay. It's so much fun just reinventing what you have. I mean, it really is. So we got the fresh cut flowers. I'm like, well, why can't we put the fresh cut flowers in the little votives? The little votives. Where there. the candles normally go. And so that's what I did. We cut the flowers, we filled <laughs> them with water, and then I have some decorative rocks that I put in the bottom there. And the rocks say wisdom, laugh, wonder, inspire, imagine, faith, hugs. So... I mean, how awesome is that? This could even go in the center of our table. and But we've got it on a side table that heads toward the bedroom. Um, so isn't, isn't that just so nice to look at when you wake up in the morning and mm -hmm. when you um, just walk through? It's just, it's yeah. awesome. So anyway, I'll go put this it back. It really changed the whole decor. It gave it a whole new look. So how fun is that? A little water in the candle holders. and Oh, look at that one. It looks like that one's running out of water. Wow. That one's sucking up the water oh, a little faster. That was a little thirsty flower <laughs> yeah. there. So anyway, I'm planning on doing this every week mm -hmm. and changing up the flowers. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. I will be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Well, <laughs> and amongst me. <laughs> so it is. And then the vine that she put on the chandelier used to be in that candle holder. And so when we took it out to put those in, that's when the idea came to put yeah. it up on the... The, on yeah, the chandelier. That garland was wrapped all mm -hmm. around the candles. I hear my dog digging in the garbage. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> we don't believe in stopping the video. We'll just carry on. Um, I guess I can show you what I've done. I'll kind of take it out. I'm really very proud of this because, as you know, I'll be 70 this year, and I've never cross-stitched in my life. Uh, you know how it is, you're busy raising kids, working, uh, thinking you don't have such time for such foolishness. Another thing is that I used to be a smoker, so if you're a smoker, you can't do things like this because you want to use those hands for other things instead of cross-stitch. So, this, if I've got this right, this design is by Teresa Colgett. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm pretty awesome. sure on that. And so for me, this is the hugest thing I've ever done. I got my <gasps> oh, fence look in. At this. I got my two black sheep, sheep in. Yes. I ran out of the cyan color in our little cyan kind of color. And that's by Weeks Dye. And our little needle shop didn't have any more. So Sarah's ordered some from, I think it's, I've got some thread coming from 123 Stitch, and I've got some more thread coming from the Fat Quarter Shop. And then mm -hmm. I have some thread coming from the Silver Needle. I had to go to all three places to get the colors we need. And so evidently, it's, the thread is... Um, they were telling us know. at our local needle shop that it's hard to it's get in. It's hard to come by. Can you so, see? so now I'm just... And I got the birds done here. And this is going to have a stairway going down. And I yes. think it's entitled like a stairway to you. And then these are white sheep that are going to be on here and a bunch of stuff. So I'm very, very oh, it's coming So nice. And she's using the Lori Holt fabric and it is the larger count. It's 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. And, and I had mom look at some of my fabric, fabric that I have. That's the 14 count. And you, she can see I, the whole, I, I think when this is done, she's going to be ready to try 14 count. But oh, I wanted, this is so soft it is. and so, oh, it's so nice. But to me, the only trouble I have with it is... God, this looks good, If I it? pull my stitches too tight, then it really stretches. So I have to be careful on that. But this is helping me learn how to actually read a pattern, which yeah. um, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, I was so lost just doing the Lizzie and Kate or Liz, Lizzie Kate. Lizzie Kate. So, and it's coming out of the Celebrate 15 Years of Needlework with um, Teresa Colgate. And mm -hmm. as we've said before, the pages are glossy. The pattern is large. There's no need to enlarge it. Some of the patterns I have to enlarge on my printer because I can't see them. Well, the, oh, I just love this one. And I for me, wait. what I absolutely loved about it is her, um, uh, 
what do you call it? What the symbols? Symbols. You can see them and you can understand them both on her chart and when she puts them out. I mean, I know there was one we were mom was doing, yeah, and the symbol. One of the symbols was a slash that went to the right, and one of the symbols was a slash that went to the left. And when those two symbols are right by each other on the chart, it's mm -hmm. disastrous. So we went through and we highlighted things on that chart for mom um, because that was a hard chart to read. But this, these are amazing charts to read. Absolutely amazing. They are. So. And I love this. It's just, it's got like this old vintage cool feel it's really nice i like it yeah and even the windows will be filled in in this one so i'm anxious to keep going on it so um well, I'm you're waiting for one. more of the cayenne red to come in yeah and... hopefully it can get the red yeah. but see on this like sarah was explaining to me i have to use four threads she's using four strands of thread right on so this you really count. go through your thread because these are big pieces i mean that's one squares in there one skein and honest to god i i i'll swear i yeah you're not i didn't uh, do the trick someone said about pulling your thread from the numbered end and i haven't yet unraveled that's worked huh oh my Great. gosh yeah nice so i'm having so much fun in fact it's hard to put this down so i'm enjoying it <laughs> excellent okay so i showed you the blanket I guess I can show you um, some things. I had some finishes. Um, I'm still working on these finishes. I feel like, you know, my Little Sheet Virtue finishes, I know what I'm doing. I've got the houses they go into. But these other finishes, like the Fresh Farm Eggs one that I did last week, mm -hmm. um, we found a larger house and it was just perfect for the little, um, the little, little hen hands. house. Yep. And, but when I'm, I've, I've moved forward on this one. What I've done is put the, the little pom-poms on from Lady Dot Creates. And then I can't find a frame. So what I'm doing is I found some fabric. I'm thinking this might be a nice fabric to go with it. So we're gonna move forward and put some more fabric on sticky board and start layering this up and see where it goes. Yeah. Um, well, once again, this is first we had each other, then we had you, now we have everything. I just love this Do you remember one. where that pattern came from? Or this is? pattern is from Cherry Hill Stitchery, okay. I believe, right. is how you say that. And, um, <laughs> We're laughing because uh, two dogs, the dogs I need to go get the dogs a bone. Then they'll behave. Um, oh, what, sure, what I can keep showing them. Um, they like the little skewer things. Oh, okay. All right, and then um, I think I showed you last week the Valentine House. I started working on which one? The one with the little envelope right there. Now, if you notice, there's one tree here, but I decided to not put in the words and add another tree. So I got that done this week. I tell you, we just got so much stitching done this week. And look at that, there it is. Thank you. They're happy now. Um, so once again, I have the Lady Dot Creates. I love these because they're just so petite. The ones you find in Joann's and Michael's are so large, they just take away from the stitching. That's what we like. We don't wanna take away from our stitching. We wanna keep it just simple, gentle, so we can focus on the art of stitching. Oh, and look at, so the two trees and the little trees have some swirls in them. This is by Waxing Moon Designs. Did you tell them and you added that other tree in? I did. Excellent. And we are thinking, now this is not traditional, but once again, we're trying to figure out how to finish this, but maybe, we have so many shadows, sorry. It's the, the chandelier, actually. We need to raise the chandelier and get rid of some of these shadows. But we're thinking this. But I, I don't like know, that. we'll see. I, you know, we change our mind, but that's kind of what we have in mind for this one for the next layer behind it. We'll move forward from there. So that's um, the Waxing. Valentine House Trio. And then the other one, uh, Madame Chantilly, The Love. I changed the L-O-V-E from white into that brown tone. And I got that <laughs> finished. Ooh, that's a long one. Let's back it up. So there's that. 
and then the baby's breath, and then there's the V, and then on the E, the chart, that heart is hanging from a bow. I didn't care for it. Um, where is it? This is what it originally looks like, right there. You'll see it's hanging from a bow. Something about the bow I just didn't like. So I thought, I'm just gonna fill in the E and just let the heart sit there. So once again, we're having a time trying to figure out how to frame this. We're thinking, oh, that, this is just not good lighting. Okay, so there, where it's kind of got a marble, it's actually sunflowers in here, but um, there it is. It's pretty. Yeah. You know, it's very hard for her. Because, you know, she loves her brown checked. I love my brown checks. <laughs> but I said we can't do everything if they're brown checked. Oh, and I understand that. Oh, yeah. But I have to give her crap over it. Because we pull it out every time. We tried it. And, you know, I surprisingly. Know, I know. It works. No work. matter what you put it on, it works. Do. And Mom was stitching that one from <coughs> Teresa Excuse Colgate. Me. And she's like, you know, I hate to say it, but I think the brown check is going to go with that one from Teresa Colgate. Um... Yeah. Speaking yeah. of Teresa Kogut, I am working on another one of hers from that same book. I feel like I've just gotten so far this week. It feels great. This book, I highly recommend it. It's, you, I know nothing about it, how much it cost her. And but they're I not, ordered it. they're not too challenging. And they're, you enjoy stitching them and you just want to keep stitching and you just want to, see the next section done. So I was telling you about this one. No one ever became poor by giving. Ah, this is really horrible lighting. You can't really see. Um, we got so many shadows. Well, we gotta try to fix that. Um, but look, oh, and notice my birds. I've got one blue and one red. It's charted to be red. And I think I mentioned last week, I've just, I so love this outline. I feel like we're losing the outline in the red bird. So I did one in blue and one in red. I'm like, okay, who do we like better, the blue or the red? Um, I'm going with blue. We're, I'm leaning toward the blue. I am. Oh, gosh, they, it's not showing. Um, but I can see it. I can see it when I look in there. Yeah. We're worried on the shadows. We apologize. It's so bad. I don't, it's crazy. But anyway, I think I'm going to stick with the blue. Yeah. Yeah. Stick with the blue. And then we'll see how that becomes finished. She just really does such nice work on her cross stitching. I wanted to be able to do that one day. And then I started the little Did you do brushes. anything else with your life this week other than cross stitch? Hmm. Well, my husband was out riding his bike. Well, that's not you. <laughs> he comes home a little early. Like, what's he coming home early for? Well, he collided with a deer while riding his bike. I mean, that's not funny. I mean, I, just, I think you're probably all having, oh, yeah, right, really. He really did. He collided with a deer, and his helmet busted, and he can't ride his bike. And, you know, he had to bring his, I don't even know. Did you have to carry your bike, or did, could you? You can't hear me. I don't know if he had to carry his bike or if he had to, uh, if he could push it home. But anyway, he wasn't far from home, thank goodness. He was just a couple blocks away when it happened. So, but he collided with the deer. The bicycle helmet busted upon it when he hit the ground. And, and anyway, so... Um, I mean, that's a solid object to be hitting. But you know, yeah. here, where we live, the animals just kind of roam freely. And usually and normally, they're not running. And, you know. me, and Greg thought this was a youngin or a young one. Because normally the deer are so friendly here, they are not scared of people. Mm -hmm. They just, you can be within touching distance and they just look at you. I mean, even when you're walking by with a dog. Yeah. But so it was unusual for that deer to be spooked. Um, and he said there was two of them. He dodged the first one and he didn't see the second one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really, I mean, yeah. we're very fortunate that, I mean, he's really stiff and sore, but. The deer got up faster than he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I you become a helmet helmet believer when you see that. You know, at my age, we rode all over and fell down hills and never yeah. had helmets. But when you start cracking a helmet, it's better than your head, that's for sure. Yeah, no kidding. So I did get a lot of stitching done, though. Um, the Little House Needleworks, love. 
And I started that. I kind of got my string in the way here. Well, that's so cute. I know. I see another house. Yeah, that'll definitely be in another house. I just said this sheep. Sheep, each sheep is different. This one's got the longest this legs sheep, of any sheep yeah, I've ever sheep seen. This sheep has long legs. And, and same way with the ears. Yeah. I love him. There he is. He's kind of cute. Once again. And he has a heart in there. I don't know. It's like I say. It's just I'm so... trying to get. Well, it's in the shadow. That's crazy. All right. We need a lighting. Designer. Uh, lighting help. Um, a designer, yeah. So there's that one. And then I have one more I started. And this is. Gosh. I think this is like one of the. I bought this a, a while ago and I never got to it. It is Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, bless this home. It just gets away. Bless this home. And I just started this last night, but oh, it's so pretty. I did the scrolling. It is. It's just. Yeah. It's pretty. So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna work more on these, and hopefully we'll have something actually fully finished for you next week. We're close on those three that I showed you. We're close. Just <laughs> trying. You know, Sarah's so good about, I'll, I'll yell, I need help. I can't figure out where to go. I, how many stitches do I have in here? I swear to God. I can count my stitches 20 times and get 20 different numbers out of 16 stitches. What happens is she'll, she'll count, we need five spaces. So she counts her five spaces, she puts her needle in, but then she'll go the opposite direction. So then she cuts into the one that she was supposed to leave as a space. So now she only has four spaces instead of five spaces. So, but you're getting it. And I don't know what happened here, <laughs> but I think only Sarah can tell the story. She, I think, helped me get some stitches out. She was having a problem and she was trying to get some stitches out. I think out. it was going angrily on this bird here. The diagonal stitches, yeah, get confusing for you. Yeah. And so she was kind enough to take my stitches out, and then she brings it back to me. Because she got a couple out, and then it's like two of the thread, two of the four threads came, and, oh. and the other two were stuck, and anyway. And, you know, I don't, yeah, I'm learning, I'm working on it, but, you know, she continuously goes the exact same way on every row, and I goes all my mind tells me to go type of thing. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, I won't show you the back of my hair. Isn't that cool? That's the back. It could be the front. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's just so cool when it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so on. <laughs> so anyway, she kindly took my stitches out and she brought it back to me. And as I've all told you, threading a needle is not an easy object for me. It's much easier now because I have a bigger head of my needle. But what happens is the needle to get a bigger head is so long that you have a hard time using all your thread up. So she goes back and soon and I'm over here and I'm <laughs> licking my thread and <laughs> licking it's thread. like me trying to lick my Christmas card envelopes that were peeling stick. And all of a sudden I see Sarah. That sound you hear when you know somebody's dropped their needle. <laughs> Oh, no. And, and she's look. looking and looking and all of a sudden I look up and she's giving me this glare like you've never seen in your life. No. I'm like, did I leave my needle over there? I said, <laughs> I don't think so. I'm like, mom, how would you not know that was not my needle because it's half the size of you? No, I, yours, said, I mean, yours, you can put a strand of yarn through it. <laughs> I said, well, my dark. No wonder. And there's me. We said a hard bit all over my knee. <laughs> Spitting all over my needle. <laughs> so she kindly <sighs> jerks it out of my hand, and I see her in the kitchen with her lights all wipes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. And the saga went on, and I had no trouble. Um, Threading uh, my own needle. Yes, I just can't believe you didn't realize that needle was half the size. So I was so you were so, you were so focused doing. on getting the thread through the hole. You oh, you? Yeah, <laughs> a needle hole thread. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh yeah, she says 
Just take your needle, bend the thread, pinch it between your thumb. <laughs> well, my thumbs are a little bigger than her tiny little thumb, you know? Anyway, all was well. She got her needle sterilized. I felt like I was in a hospital. <laughs> we need a container for sharps in our kitchen. <laughs> so anyway, that was our... Um, uh, that wasn't really a dilemma. No. But it... But you, <laughs> I think of you wiping your needle down with a disinfectant. Well, I need to film you. You know how I showed that video a couple weeks ago of those little kids trying to thread a needle? I need to film her trying to thread a needle. Honest to goodness, she would have that done by now if she could get this needle threaded. <sighs> we all have our problems. She's gained her patience. I used to always hear go, oh, I just hate threading needles. I just hate threading needles. Well, and then the worst part is because the the material is, I, I love the softness of the material. I'm serious, I do. But Sarah says, I don't understand how you drop your needle all the time and how you lose your thread all the time. I understand because, now. <laughs> because, look at your needle doesn't fall out. And I said, well, look at this. My needle falls right out because the hole is bigger than my yeah, needle. Yeah, like when I'm stitching... <laughs> I can put the needle from the bottom going into through the top and then if I need to let go to grab something or the other piece, my needle just stays. But when I was trying it out on mom's, you put it through the top and you have to take your left hand to hold it while your right hand comes back to grab it yeah. because it falls right through the hole. So there are challenges working with that with that fabric that is has such large holes and is so soft. And then my needle comes unthreaded. So back again, and then, <laughs> I'm threading on So the when I tried working on that <sighs> piece of fabric, I had more empathy as to what she was going through because it really is different. It is not the same. Not empathy for your needle. I know. <laughs> no, I wanted my needle back. Hands off my needle. <laughs> and you were licking and spitting. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I couldn't get it threaded. Then I understood <laughs> I what you said. I do what yeah, I have to do to survive. Else. Oh, here's oh. to you. Remember, kindness. <laughs> kindness, yes. Kindness, <laughs> kindness. Oh. She's very kind. She was kind before kindness became the thing to be. Before kindness was cool. <laughs> People always said she was too kind. Oh, yeah. She I raped for every squirrel there was on the street. Oh, I'm my God. Greg kidding. still gets so mad. There'll be like this baby squirrel and he can't decide if he can, should continue to cross the road or if he should go back or if he should run faster or what he should do. Well, I just stop and let him decide. And Greg's like, just keep driving. It'll go. I'm like, no, I have to stop. I get honked at so often. And I'm like, we live in a small town. The speed limit's 25. It's okay. Today, this is the truth. The day we're driving down our beautiful little town right down Main Street. It, I mean, this town looks like, like it's right out of a Hollywood movie. This town you is cannot go faster than twenty five miles an hour. There's little that's blinking just, signs yeah, all that's, over. That's the speed limit. All of a sudden, we're <laughs> driving down the road, you know, heading but, right but, downtown, but, but, looking but, but, at the but, farmers market, all, all the artisan selling. All of a sudden, we hear, "Hey, you! You want to get moving? It's a motorcycle. It's a moped. <laughs> this guy on a moped. I'm like, dude." Well, so, I wanted to get out and ask him if everything was okay. And she said, you stay in the car. Because <laughs> there's a stop sign every other and street And we were right also. by the farmer's market, so you needed to go extra slow. Yes. And wait for people to cross the street. And it's safety. It, yeah, we have an awesome farmer's market. Yeah. And artisans come and sell. And, yeah, and you know? then when we finally got to where there was a turning lane, and he knew it was going to turn in, whew, he went by so fast and... Inside, I thought, you're going to skin those cute little knees if you keep this up. <laughs> but he got around us. He got around. But yes. when someone starts yelling at you and you can hear him, you're like, hey, you don't think they're moving. <laughs> I know, he was on his little moped. I'm like, come on. <sighs> okay. It's okay. Yeah. There's always someone who needs to get somewhere a little faster than me, and it's okay. Yeah, they have their funny. reasons. Yeah. Oh. They have their reasons. But we'll we got out of the best, right? We got out of town. We got out of town, made it to Joanne's. There we were, sitting on, you know, we were at, I think, Hobby Lobby yesterday. Sure. Did we go to Hobby Lobby yesterday? Yes, we did. And it was hard for me not to pull my camera out and film, because oh. here's this cute little gal, just like I told you, sitting on the floor, cross-legged on the dirty, she cold was. bed floor, 
as she's trying to get all the light blues that were on the bottom with her little... She had her big list of all yeah. the threads she needed, and mm -hmm. she was literally Indian style on the floor, and then crawling on her, scooching over on her, on her bottom. And This is my goal, to oh. get DMC floss at eye level. Put all that sticky board below it and all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Get the floss across there. That's right. The sticky board can just slide in on the shelf huh. on their little cubbies. We right we've arranged Hallmark cards. We could arrange that. And then you go to Joanne's, our Joanne's anyway, or this area's Joanne's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to be associated by saying that. <laughs> there, somebody. I'm not kidding you. I went there to get a simple color, 3862. I remember that number now. Or was it 3682? It doesn't matter. But anyway, there, whoever, I'm not kidding you, whoever takes the floss out, they take the handful and they just put it in the thing. There was not one floss in the right number. And you had one bucket with floss and three empty. One bucket with floss and three empty. It's it was like, unbelievable. They, just, they don't stock it. It's like, ah, oh, so we don't like shopping for floss there. But. Yeah, so. They but we were there because I needed to look for some fabric, and um, Mom no. thought she would check and see yeah, if her floss I'm... was there, but it wasn't. Oh, so anyway, that was that was my rant for the day. Oh, she oh, does I just all. Okay, I'm going to do my best here because I know the lighting is not good. But I've got some stuff. And I will have to take blame for that because we do have it, a light, and I thought we should take and put a blue no, light on it. No, it's not a blue light. It it's isn't, just, it's I just, think it's the time of day. Oh, I okay. really do. We will not be doing this this time of day. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not you. Okay. But I did get Good. some um, new patterns. Here's another waxing moon designs, and then we've got April. So I probably won't be doing that one. But I really like this B one, and I I won't put the month on there. I'm just gonna do the picture and none of the words. Okay, I have to go change something. Carry on. Okay. And <laughs> carry on. These are cute. But she never does put the months on because that's just how she does it. We just got okay. so much. This must be floss to put away. This is floss that goes with this pattern. Oh! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was kitted up. So anyway, there's, there's those. I really like those. I just won't put the months on there. I've never been a fan of um, stitching with the months. And then I have another one from Country Cottage Needleworks. Oh my gosh. Let Love Bloom. We're going to change up the colors. There's so much pink in here. Um, we're going to get it more primitive. And Let Love Bloom will probably be in the brown tones. Well, and that's what I'm learning with, you know, just starting this. You have to do it in the colors you like or you're just not going to enjoy doing it. And then I came upon this 2018 Collector's Heart from Heart and Hand. And so this came with some buttons and some beads and the linen. So that was cool. So I have ordered these through the Fat Quarter Shop and I'm excited to work on this one. This one will be a nice fun stitch. And then, okay, this one looks so cute. This change one, up the I colors. Can. I'm going to change up the colors a little bit. And this is one where the chart's very hard to read. Now, I had another one from this company. It's so Emma. And um, the chart was not hard to read. But this one is crazy hard. So I will be blowing this one up. And this is a lot bigger than I thought it was. I didn't look at the size. But it's 139 by 128. I mean, this is big. But um, I'm excited to do that one. It's just cute. This reminds me so much of the quilt you just did. Quilt. Oh, it sure does. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, 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 you're fine. And then um, I picked up some of the little wonder clips for when I do um, my sewing. Instead These are of, fun. Yeah, instead of the pins. You know how we got those hearts from the Fat Quarter Shop uh, Cupid box? Mm -hmm. Well, here we just get these little wonder clips and you just clip your little pieces together. So I got a couple different, um, <laughs> everything okay over there? No, it didn't look stupid. <laughs> um, so and then I got some minis. We have to figure out how to, you know, they're fabulous or clipping, but you can also measure stuff with it. But Yeah, here, um, like these ones. So I just got a variety of clips because I'm not a big fan of pins. 
Um, like I'll use the pins for before I do the quilting and stuff. But um, these are working really well. I'm liking the clips, so that's a fun, fun change. Um, those other ones were magic clips. And um, we love these accents. Whenever I use the, the Little Sheep Virtues and put them in the house, we use um, these little, not these, but this guy's, it's a set of padlocks. Yeah, and we use those. locks and they're hearts and padlocks. And they're just adorable. And so here, mom thought these little keys would work really good. Maybe even mm -hmm. on that Valentine one that I finished up that we're trying to fully finish. Yeah. And then I picked up some more of these. I use these in my finishes. And so I picked up another one of these from Tim Holtz, Ideaology. Some and gun it's metal good to stars. pick those up when you're in there. I think those are on sale. When they're gone, they? yeah. yeah. And, and when they're gone, they don't appear to get them back again. And then I thought these were really cute. These are adorable. These are Prairie Schooler garden gloves. So what you do is you cross stitch the cuffs of the glove. And then you take felt or wool and you make the, the glove itself and then you applique the different pictures on. Aren't they cute? So I think this is just something fun and different. So that's, um, that's gonna be a fun one. Yeah, mm -hmm. little garden gloves. And so that's everything. And I just love the box that comes in from the back corner shop. Yeah, it's so cute, so fun. So I'm excited, I just, I'm really enjoying stitching. I'm having a great time doing it. Well, and, and I got a haul too, do I, can I have my new? Of course you and can. And I'll let you open. Oh, look, I have thread on that. Is uh -huh. this something that I haven't seen before? I don't know. Have you been snooping? <laughs> this is my haul, and I'm going to let it's you. Heavy. <laughs> is oh, it great things are always heavy. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. See, she, I, she can figure wait anything out. It's a spoon rest. It is it's a, a spoon rest. rest. I know it is. <laughs> Where did you get this? I don't know. You know you don't, I, where did you get this? You don't need to know everything. Okay. I've been looking for a spoon rest. Oh, oh look at that. Dream it, do it. Yeah, and she cooks oh, so much perfect. and she makes such fabulous meals. And she's it says Hallmark. Did you have this like a long time ago? Oh, when David went Hallmark, I had to really? bring it up before he got to the camera. <laughs> oh my gosh, awesome. Yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah, look I thought that. that just... She likes those sayings and so. Well, and I've been looking for a spoon rest. Yeah. I'm tired of putting the spoon on a yeah. napkin or on a plate. And mm -hmm. it's like, I just want to. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, sure. That is so cool. Yeah, she always cooks. She does such a good job of it. And Oh, speaking of cooking, you know. Speaking of. Oh, you know, yes. I really would like to have a little restaurant one day, but I'm not going to ever do it because it's too much. That's a lot I, of oh. work. But anyway, I made tomato soup the other day, and I told Sarah, this soup is so good, I should bottle it. And this is my tomato soup recipe, if any of you want to make grilled cheese sandwiches and have tomato soup. I just get two, I do not measure, so they're the bigger cans of crushed tomatoes. And I buy crushed tomatoes, and then okay, I, I have to stop. <laughs> she doesn't measure, right? I don't. Maybe we've talked about this before. I don't know. But I wanted her lasagna recipe. And so years ago, I wanted this lasagna recipe. And so just recently, I thought, you know what? I have that recipe. Let's pull it out and, and read it and see what my ingredients are that I need. Yeah. And so I'm looking, and it says sour cream. <coughs> same size that's in the fridge. <laughs> really? Yeah, the size that's in the fridge. fridge. So anyway, back to your... Just a can about this size of tomatoes. Yeah, you know, not that, that little one, the next, the, 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 the same bigger size. The same size that's in your cupboard. The same size in my cupboard. <laughs> yes. And I always get the crushed, and I get two cans of it, and then you can use your fancy Cuisinart, whatever you got, but we just have the little bullet. A <laughs> little bullet crushes everything. That works wonderful, yeah. yes. And so I take the largest cup of the bullet, and I can only put or it through. It's third. a ninja. 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 Yeah. Okay. Ninja. Bullet died, you got a ninja. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the bullet was bought in a rummage. Yeah, like for a dollar, and it worked for years. Okay, sorry. So I dump it in my ninja, and the little ninja guy goes like that. You know? <laughs> but, you know, you can only get like half of it in the bullet. And then I also dump in some chicken broth. <laughs> and I put the cover on it, and it does its thing. And then I put it in the pan. 
And then you do this about four times because that it takes that long to eat. So it's tomato and chicken broth in the Ninja. Yep. And then you put it in a pan. And then you take Chicken broth? Ooh, that's good. Yeah. And then this is going to make you go, oh, but it's really good. <laughs> that intro, excuse me. I just get a can of, I think it's called Goya, G-O-Y-A, or just. Goya. Yeah, it's coconut milk. And I get the bigger can, the same size as a tomato can. <laughs> And I, I just dump so that. So two in. parts tomato, one part coconut. Go, yeah, and as of the chicken okay. stuff, I just dump and pour till I I don't use a whole thing of it, you know, just a whole jug. Yeah, just just until it feels right. Until it feels right. Until the ninja's full. <laughs> well, then I dump some more in the pan. But <laughs> gotcha. anyway, let me tell you, I don't know if it's the little sweetness of that coconut milk. It is just the best tomato soup. So if you're... So are you telling me there's three ingredients in this? That's yeah. it? Yeah, So it. the cans of tomato, mm -hmm. whole tomatoes, yep. right? No, crushed tomatoes and I... Crushed tomatoes. Sorry, I'm not a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> crushed tomatoes, chicken broth, coconut milk. Yep. And once in a while, I will take uh, an onion and chop it up. And then if I use an onion... I put the chicken broth in my pan and then I just kind of boil the noodles so they get dirt in it. <laughs> and the, and the onions <laughs> until they're done or close to done and then I dump in my stuff. But it just, it's so easy, so good. And so if you're in the mood for some that. warm it's, soup on a cold winter's night up there in the north. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. you can, I've done it and I've fried up hamburger and put it in there. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but it's just good, just plain the way it is. So, you know, yeah. and then I found something out about my husband this week. And what was that? He doesn't like ham and cheese sandwiches. Out of 20 years, I never knew he didn't like ham and cheese sandwiches. I've made grilled cheese sandwiches mm -hmm. and with tomato soup. And, mm -hmm. and so I was going to make some grilled cheese sandwiches and we had some ham in the freezer so I'm like I'm gonna spruce this up and let's do some ham yeah. and cheese sandwiches with a little garlic spread on it well turns out he doesn't like a ham and cheese sandwich who doesn't like a hot yeah. ham and cheese sandwich you yeah. like ham you like cheese but so anyway he we got the ready. ham and cheese and he got the cheese sandwich mm -hmm. yeah on mm -hmm. real and yeah, we had some good meals this week good, good this week well you know we did we did the traditional, old-fashioned oh. Minnesota meals. We did tater tot hot dish. We did goulash. We did uh, chicken casserole. Oh, yeah. And the chicken, chicken casserole, casserole. so easy. You just um, take the rice a box of chicken, chicken rice a -roni. Roni. You add the water, as it says on the box, add the butter. But in addition to that, you add a can of cream of, mushroom, cream of chicken, chicken soup. And then you mix that all together with a whisk in, in your pan that can go in the oven. And then once that's all mixed together, you put on however many pieces of chicken breast that you want for your family, put it in the oven, and it's done in like a half an hour. Um, so we just, <laughs> oh no, we just had really simple, and the goulash, I have this amazing oh goulash. Oh my God, recipe it's amazing. Where you just boil in the noodles right as the goulash is cooking and the broth and the tomatoes and, yeah, and the onions. Good. It's so good. And the tater tot hot dish, you can't go wrong with that. You can't. I'm so surprised. we just had good, easy, old-fashioned, home-style meals that are just staples in our family. There's another really good one that I didn't make. But you use two cans of chicken noodle soup. I like to use the chicken and stars with, with rice. Mm -hmm. Or no, just chicken and stars with noodles. And then the stars are the noodles. Got it. And then you mix rice in with that and hamburger. And that's just an awesome, quick, easy one-pot dish, too. So that's, well, that's why it was kind of fun this week. Just easy meals. And then we did a salmon with some fire-roasted vegetables. That was more of a healthier meal. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was just thinking about, you know how that conversation kind of sparks your memory and stuff, and I was just thinking how I guess we're kind of always cooked. I don't know if it's coming from Minnesota or what it is, but even when kids are, you know, when Sarah was little, we were always making something. But, I, you know, it's always so much fun. I feel so bad for kids nowadays because they can't lick the bowl. They can't eat raw cookie dough. We buy, we make cookies and don't get them baked. We just eat the cookie <laughs> dough. Eggs and all. We haven't died. I haven't lost any weight from poisoning. Um, she's healthy, her brain works. 
even a simple thing like, oh no, you can't lick the cake bowl. Well, I got thinking, I remember <laughs> telling Sarah, you can lick the beaters, but make sure you turn the mixer off. <laughs> so to this day, the mixer gets unplugged before I lick a beater. Can you imagine? Safety first. <laughs> Safety first. Yes. But I think, oh my gosh, you know. Uh, anyway, it's too bad because, you know, the best memories come from that spatula and the, you know, I always remember my mom would clean everything out of the cookie or the cake bowl as she put it in there. And I'd say, oh, just leave me a little. You know? Leave me a little. <laughs> yeah. but, oh, it's so, yeah. So anyway, I hope it comes back to where kids can just eat cookie dough and you know, maybe with parents being home now with COVID, <laughs> maybe there's more of that happening. Yeah, and you know, you're in the kitchen and having fun. Yeah, you know, because it is, it's just, mm -hmm. oh, we did have a bad experience. We had a good experience and a bad experience. Because even with all the cooking, we still kind of went out. Um, went to McDonald's yesterday morning and they have apple fritters at our McDonald's. Wonderful hit. Highly recommend it. But then she got the cinnamon roll. It was a three thumbs down, and you only have two thumbs, so three down. That's really bad. Do not do that to our video, please. To keep thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> but the cinnamon roll wasn't very good. Oh, it's just no. We Panera cinnamon rolls all the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did get a taste one once. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but today, evidently, it was Sarah's husband's turn to pick her breakfast. Was honest to God. This was fabulous. It was, what was it called from Panera? It was a bagel pack, and you got like 13 bagels, and you could choose from a variety of bagels, and we had never had such a thing before. No. I mean, we've um, had bagels, but I mean, 13 to choose from? Oh. Yeah, there was blueberries, cinnamon. You guys probably already know all this. We had no clue. Yeah, everything cinnamon, bagel. The everything, the sesame. Blueberry. Um... It just went on and on. Oh and my God, it was, it was fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. And then they send two tubs of sour cream. Yeah, well, you, could, you could get <laughs> not sour cream. I cream, cream sour cream everything. <laughs> I do. There was cream cheese. And you had a plain cream cheese, or you had a honey with almond cream cheese, and then there was an onion and chive one that Greg didn't order that one, but that one sounded fun too. But yeah, so that was a really nice, something we'd never done before. Well, and you did this pick curbside pickup, right? <laughs> I did. So I just, uh, we ordered online and then I went over and picked it up. There's one right here in town, right, you know, one and a half miles away. And so as soon as you're there, you just click on your email and say, I'm here. And then they come out to the car with the, with the little cool. bag and you get your bag and you go on your way. Yeah. So yeah. that was, oh, it was really good. So that was a good thing. It what was. do you think of your supper? That's a good question. Leftovers? They're gone. No, I do have some cheese. Actually, I was thinking cheese tortellini. Um, we could either do it with Alfredo sauce or a spaghetti sauce. And then I've got some baguettes. So we could do something like that. Ooh, that would be good. And then I've got some broccoli. Ooh. <laughs> I was waiting for that comment. Oh. Some broccoli is always good with anything. I love. And then we have lemon and lemon, and then we put lemon on fresh lemon juice on top of the broccoli. It's amazing. I can't maintain this weight on broccoli alone. Oh, <laughs> <It's insane. laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, but the tartellini sounds good. One day we'll tell you about Sarah's uh, friend from way back in grade school. They're still friends, miles apart, and he sends her. Spaghetti, spaghetti sauce. sauce. He won't tell me the recipe. It's a secret recipe, and it's amazing. Yeah. It is so good. Um, one more thing I picked up at... Oh, I'm sorry. Jo oh, that's fine. You at, were shopping. At the craft store was some scrapbook paper. And... What are you going to do with scrapbook paper? What's that one saying? I can't read it upside down. You're something. You're all right. Okay, you're all right. Something about dig, something with the B. I can't read it from back here or on the TV. Um, you're extra special. <laughs> That's <What? key>. <laughs> <laughs> TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, you use your cameras as a TV now. I watch That's TV true. on my phone, I watch That's TV true. on my iPad. But anyway, what I do with these is I buy two. I love when I find scrapbook paper that has these little squares with inspirational words 
you are the greatest and celebrate today and why hello there today is your day you know anything inspiring i'm on it and um she is that's true so what i do with these let me show you what i do with these i cut out these squares and you turn them into matching games for the kids or matching games at the senior citizen centers, assisted living centers. And what I do is, here's a pack that's done. These are all made from scrapbook papers and I laminate them. I put some nice stiff paper on the back and then we um, tape it to the front with double stick tape and then we laminate it. And this one says, grateful for all you do. And I mean, how pretty is that? Hello, um, and enjoy every moment. And these are, you know, different flower themes on this one. Um, kindness is contagious. And of course, there's two of everyone and you lay them down and, and you play the memory game or the matching game. And for the kids, I think it's good word recognition. Um, Let's see, I've got another one here. This is more themed. I love you with all of my heart. If the little one turns this one over, you can help them read each word one by one. Or you can do, look at that shape. What's that shape? Yeah, that's a heart. And here's dear little one. I mean, it's just a fun, non-traditional, but fun matching game using the scrapbook. Here's an A.A. A. Uh, Milne quote from Winnie the Pooh, of course. Sometimes the smallest things take up the most room in your heart. Oh, it's so cute. Um, twinkle, twinkle, little star, do you know how loved you are? There's that saying I just love. I've been seeing that a lot lately, lately. So that's what I do when I find these scrapbook papers that are... Um, um, have these fun little squares. Now here's like a winter themed one that I never got, I haven't got laminated or put backing on yet. Um, so here is just the floppy scrapbook paper. You cut it out. I mean, and how cool, huh? And then you just turn it into your matching game. It's amazing. So there it is. So that's what I did. I found some really fun, actually I found like there's a bunch there. Sometimes I go and I can't see any. And this time, I, there was like four more other options that I wanted to get and um, I didn't. But well, maybe next time. You could pick up a laminator for $25. I can't remember where we, the last one we got. Where we Gosh, got I think we got it like at Walmart or Target. I yeah, mean, I think and then you can get store. like a hundred laminating sheets also there and I know that came from um, Walmart yeah or you can yeah. get them at your Costco Sam's or whatever and it's amazing how many times you'll use it and it's fun to... oh yeah Greg will come up to me with one of these cards you get in the mail that used to always come like a credit card but now they don't so they're all flimsy but it's like a health insurance card or a, a dental card or a car oh. insurance and, and he comes... so we go ahead and <laughs> yeah, he wants everything laminated. <laughs> oh, not only that, but you know, because she's now this little sore and she's this crafty thing, and now that he's working from home, you see this more. Well, and, and he's been you're... lounging around since he fell down. Well, he and didn't I fall down, say... he was bucked well... off his bike by a deer. <laughs> There's a cross stitch image for you, I should try to work on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he's been lounging around in like his jammas and just run around clothes and <laughs> the other day I noticed he had like this big old string hanging down in between his legs. I'm like, what do you got there? What? <laughs> I thought it was perhaps need to be a chip and bail dance and how they pull the cord and there you go. <laughs> she thought it was like a rip cord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he's... Sorry. He's got this pair of pants with a hole in it. And he's like, you can sew it. I'm like, just buy a new pair of pants. <laughs> it must be 15 years old. I know. But anyway. So don't be sewed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could go on and on with our antics. Oh, yeah. We really could. But, you know, he's, he's the person who, he truly has two pairs of pants and he wears them. Mm-hmm. For two years until they can't be worn anymore and gets another pair. So he doesn't think he needs a pair of running pants, but 
<laughs> Bradley isn't gonna be running for a while. He's not gonna be running for a while, no. No. Let's see, and then oh boy, I don't know if you guys have seen this show, but we found a new show on TV and we're not big TV watchers. Because it's usually taken up by sports. Um not we don't watch no, sports. No, 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 no. But this show is on Thursday nights here. And it's called The Hustler. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, Craig Ferguson. Anyway, if you get a chance, watch it because it's just mind-boggling. You try to figure out which one of these people are the liar. Which one's the hustler? Oh, my God. They and give you clues. Like, this person won a million dollars in a, on a scratch-off ticket. Um, this person wants... And it's all the same person. Yeah, and this person once snuck into a party to meet their favorite celebrity, and then they'll get the celebrity name. And You know, it's all these things that you can't imagine someone's doing. And then you look at these five people, and you try to figure out, and then, of course, they ask a question after that. Clue is given, and they all answer and kind of dig in well, and Well, only and... the hustler knows the right answer, mm -hmm. and you're going for $20,000 every time you get a question right. So the hustler is, without letting anyone know, tried to lead them to the right answer. So, you know, you're watching, you're listening. These guys are good. And um, the one hustler the last week or a week ago got greedy. And we knew right away who the hustler was because... They jumped in and gave the right answer. Yeah, yeah, We're without like, oh, leading okay. around or whatever because it's on the final, final oh, question. question. But... Everyone votes to eliminate one person, and only the hustler really is, you know, the pro producers. <laughs> the producers. No, anyway, watch it. I'm not explaining it good. It's <laughs> so much fun. And then once you know, you want to be taping the show, because once you know who the hustler is, you want to go back and watch it to see if you can find out any clues that would have led you. Yeah. So, it's fun. keep watching, because we would like to be on the hustler. Not, not, well, I kind of wouldn't mind being a hustler. Because they lie about everything. So I could say, you know, whatever. But anyway, it's fun. Watch it. I don't know why I make you think of that. Of you know that show. I do. And I it's a that, fun one. Yeah, you know, now that Big Bang's off TV, we don't really watch them. Yeah. And that, so. But what else have we done exciting? I think we are... I think we went through pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, this next week, we'll see what we can get done. And, you know, we would love it if you... Do you want them to send us some of their finishes? Or yeah, let's do that. that. That would be is really your email fun. Address? What I'll do is I'll put my email address down below in the description. And you guys can share your cross-stitch finishes or your crafting projects that you're working and on. And I hope I have and them. I can share some of the pictures on, on our phones too. Because we, be we learned so much. Yeah. And we would like to learn from you too because, you know, we're, we're not experts at this at all. And I'm hoping, I think it was Lisa who was going to go try to find some chicken wire at, oh. at Michael's. I hope you found that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had a ball with that. That that, that was, was fun. fun. It's, yes, it's finishes that like fun. that that make it fun. But yeah, if you'd like to share that with us, we'd love it. And um, again, I uh, hope you're enjoying our floss too. We're enjoying being with you. Uh, anything we've forgotten? No, I think it's a great idea. Just send us some pictures. We'd love to see them. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. I mean, we're all in this together. We'll share recipes. And if you have a recipe that you think we would like to make, you send it to us because we love Oh, we'll it. try it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, she'll try anything yeah. with the broccoli. I might hold back a little bit. Oh, I'll try anything. She will. Oh, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's just food. Yeah. <laughs> it's just food. If you don't like it, you don't have to eat it again. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, we surely appreciate you being with us. Yes. Uh, we, uh, whatever that jargon is, you know, hope you liked our, <laughs> liked our YouTube channel. Oh, gosh. Subscribe to it. I'm still waiting for my cake from YouTube. Um, and you know what? <laughs> Lick a bowl and eat some cookie dough and have a good week. <laughs> and remember, 
We're here to share a cup of kindness with you and our friends. Have a great week. We'll see Bye, you Dominic. next time. Yes, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.